Hello students, welcome to the online session. Good morning to all of you all. Assalamu alaikum. So this is our first online science seminar session for the grade six, because uh, these days all of the things are happening online. So therefore we decided to have our science grade six seminar session also open to all our students, because we have been doing seminars for grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, grade 11. We have been doing many, many seminars but we did not do any seminar for grade six. So due to the request of many students, we are conducting this grade six free seminar for the new students and for the, all the students. Okay, then I hope all of you all, most of you all know me. I am Rihan Rahim, sir. I'm from the University of Colombo. I'm a Unani medical undergraduate. So it's a good opportunity for you all to learn science from a doctor so that you will learn the real science and the real things about that because I won't just be reading. Okay, today from uh, today's uh, seminar, you will be able to understand in most of the places in schools and all those things, they are just reading and the students are listening. Now you are not going to school, no? So therefore you by just reading, you won't be able to understand. So as much as possible to make it easy, I have taken all the effort and put it into a very, very nice method. So we will start it. Okay. I warmly welcome all of you all to the online science seminar conducted by uh, Mr. Rihan Rahim. This okay. This is uh, mainly done by the Science Academy Institute of Science. Okay. Then, before just jumping into the um, classes, I would like to ask. Nowadays, you all are learning a lot of things. In from grade five onwards, you have started science. You have been learning something about science. So what do you think is science? If you like, you can unmute and say, what is science? The practical. A person. The practical. Science and technology. To creating experiments and theory. Understand about the body of and theory. Very good, very good. I got a lot of answers, good answers. Yes, the main thing about science. Okay, the main thing about Yeah, one minute. The main thing about science is, okay, you can't put science into one field. Okay, science is the large study of all the fields in the world. Okay, maybe you're studying about the sun. Okay, maybe we are studying about the sun that is coming under science. Maybe we are studying about the sky that is also coming under science. We are studying about the human body that is coming under science. We are learning about the chemicals that is coming under science. We are learning about the why the fan is rotating. Okay, why these things are happening like that. Why, why, why we are studying all those are related to science. But when you look at our syllabus, okay, when you look at our syllabus, you all know the syllabus, right? You have the textbook, but the problem is you all are not going to school these days. Anyways, you have the textbook, you have uh, school teachers also doing all, doing classes. So if I ask you, what are the three main <coughs> branches of science that you should study completely? What are the three main branches of science that is very important for our syllabus. Do you all know the branches? Biology, chemistry, physics. Very good. Biology, chemistry, and physics. I hope all of you all can see my screen, no? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can see. Yes, sir. Can you see? Yes, sir. I can see. Okay, okay. Yes, good. Okay, give me one minute.
Okay, then students, we will continue. Sorry for the disturbance. Okay, so then we were talking about the branches of science. So most of the students told the correct answer. What are the main branches of science you have to study? Biology, chemistry, and physics. Biology, chemistry, and physics. Sometimes these words may be new to you, but for your O levels, do you all know which is your O level badge? Great no, eleven. Great eleven. Great eleven, sir. Okay, very good. So you all know that in grade eleven you are going to face your O levels. But when should you start to study for O levels? Okay, you have to start from now itself. Okay, from grade six, grade seven, and grade eight. Those is that is the foundation of your O level life. And then grade nine, grade ten, grade eleven are the most important. The real subjects of O level will be studied. So now itself, if you start studying only, you can get a good results. How many of you are like to be, get a very good results for O level and become doctors, engineers? Do you all like? Nine, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Me. Very, me. Very good. I like it. I like it. I want you all to be that much active. And um, there are a lot of students want to become doctors and all those things. So to become doctors, to become engineers, to become accountants, to become very, very good people in life. First, you have to do your O level properly. So to do, to start your O level properly, someone has to guide you. No? Now, now, this is 2021. Uh, in 2021, now the current grade 11 will sit for the exam. 2022, the grade 10. 2023, grade 9. 2024, grade 8. 2025, the current grade 7. And in 2026, who's going to sit for the exam? All of you all. In 2026, December, you will be sitting the major, one of the first major exams in your life. And I want all of you all to get very, very good results for your O-levels. If you do very well in O-level only, then you can do A-level. Okay, all those things. Hurry. So why I'm telling all this is, when you come to your O-level classes, you should know biology, you should know chemistry, you should know physics. In school, they won't tell you what is the lesson you are learning today, what is, whether it is chemistry or biology or physics. Okay, they will just keep on teaching. But I am not like that. I am targeting your O levels. So what I will do is when I am teaching a lesson, I will tell you whether it is biology or chemistry or physics. So today our subject will be mainly related to biology. Today our topic is related to biology. So what is happening here? You can see some of the people are not the people. Some of the animals are nicely, very cutely. They are eating. So Every time you would have seen this, when you go to the home garden, the squirrels are coming to your home. When you Okay. When you are going to the home garden, the squirrels are coming. The parrots are coming. Why are they coming to your home garden? Is it they only coming to your home garden? No, they are going to everyone's home garden. Why? There are some reasons. Okay. So the main reasons. Okay. Well, the necessities of the animals. Do you know the necessities of the animals? What are the things the animals need? Now, if I ask you, what are the things you need? You will tell, I need a car. I need a laptop. I need an iPhone. Like that, no, you will tell. What do you, what do you need? If I ask you like that, what will you tell? Food. And water. Okay, very good. So, because uh, many students are there, uh, all are speaking, it's very hard to understand. Anyways, no problem. We have a lot of needs. Okay, when we consider humans, we have a lot of needs. You have to go to school, no? You have to study. After that, you have to, if you get, uh, if you get sick, you have to go to hospital. But the animals which are living in the jungle and which is in your home garden, are they going to school? No. Are they going to hospital when they become sick? 
No. Are they going in vehicles? No. They are not going anywhere. But they are moving for few things. They are moving for their basic needs. What are the basic needs of the animals? Security, food, and habitat. Now, when you look at this picture, can you see the animation uh, lion? Okay, this is a female lion. Okay, male lion only has the hair and all. This is a female lion. A female lion is coming and chasing a pig or a hog, whatever, a small another animal and eating it. So here both security is also there, food is also there. Why is the lion moving? Why is the lion running for its food? Why is the other, running, other animal running away from the lion? For security. So these are two reasons why animals are, all the other animals in the world, they are moving. Two reasons, uh, three reasons. One reason is security. The other reason is food. Can you understand this? Okay. Then, next one, habitat. What is this habitat? Habitat means the place where, where they are place where they are staying. Okay, now for example, in your home garden, if there is a tree, listen carefully, especially there are some students who have come from the English, Tamil medium and Sinhala medium for the um, English medium, especially in government schools. Okay, they can't understand English. So you can't say like that, you have to study. Okay, little by little, you have to develop your English because if you take English medium science, your English should be very good or else you can't score marks in science. Okay, some teachers, they are teaching from Tamil and Sinhala, but when they give the paper, they will give in English and it will be very hard for the students to understand the English. Okay, so you have to, first thing is, you have to be very good in your English. So every day, do some reading practice, uh, do some um, studying in English, all those things in English. Okay, don't go for Sinhala, don't go for Tamil. Okay, always study in English. Security. Security means some of the animals, when another animal is chasing, it's running away for its own security. Or else when it is raining, an animal will go into a plant or into a shade area and sting. That is security. All those things are security. So I, can, I hope you can understand security food habitat means the place in your home garden there is a tree in that tree a bird is building its nets so the habitat of the bird is in your home that is the nest or else let's say in your home uh, a squirrel is building its nest in many people's home the squirrels are building nest no that's its habitat so for habitat it will move so for food it will move and for security it will move so today we will be learning mainly about the food. Okay, some st students are sending messages through the chat. They are asking some questions. Uh, I can't answer those questions because now I have to teach. After teaching, if you have any doubts related to the class and all those things, you can send a WhatsApp message. Yeah, then what is the unit we are learning today? That is a main doubt for some students. Unit 10, food related interaction. Okay, unit 10, food related interaction. Now, before going to the unit itself, I told you, no, the animals are moving for three reasons. One is security, one is food, and the other one is habitat. So today we are going to mainly talk about the food. Okay, the food. Then, if you observe, Okay, if you observe a plant or a tree in your home garden, you can see a lot of animals running here and there. Okay, now just go to your home garden and quickly see and come. Are there animals running here and there? Maybe tiny animals, maybe big animals. No, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So you can see a lot of animals. Even insects are animals, no? You can see insects moving. You can see birds moving. You can see butterflies. If you dig the ground and see, inside the ground, there will be earthworm. There are a lot of things. Okay? There are a lot of things. 
Now, if you write down the names of the animals and the reason for coming closer to that tree, what is the main reason? Why are the butterflies coming towards the plants? To drink the nectar. In, in, in the flower, there is a sweet juice like honey. To collect the honey, the bees are coming. To taste the honey, the butterflies are coming. The caterpillars, have you all seen caterpillars? They are coming to eat the plants. Birds, they are coming to eat the fruits. Squirrels, they are coming to eat the fruits. Okay. Can you understand? So why are the animals coming to your home garden? In search of food, mainly in search of food and maybe sometimes shelter. Okay, good. Then one by one we are going because you all are very small. I'm going very slowly. I hope you will understand everything clearly because I am giving pictures, everything to explain the thing. If you write down the names, so in our textbook itself, okay, they have written down the names. What are the animals and why are they coming? Okay, mainly in this situation, the animals are coming for what? For the food. Animals are coming for the food. Squirrels are coming to eat the guava leaf, sorry, guava fruit. Parrots are coming also to eat the guava fruit. Caterpillar, it is coming to eat the guava leaf. Then that big lizard is coming. Why? To eat the caterpillar. Then suddenly a snake is coming. Yesterday to my home garden, one snake came. Then I was seeing why the snake is coming. A big snake. Okay, we call rat snake. Do you all know the Tamil name of rat snake? Yes. And in Singhala, we call Garandia. Okay, then yesterday, one big Garandia, one big rat snake came to my home. Then I was seeing it. Why did it come? I asked it. Then it told, can the snake speak? No, it can't speak. So I was hiding and looking what it's doing. Slowly it's going and trying to catch a rat. Okay, there is a rat running closer to my home garden. So the snake is coming to eat the rat. So from this, I understood why did the snake come because of the rat? Why did the rat come? Rat came to eat the fruits, which we have put in the garden. Okay, so can you understand? Now here, cockle, they have given an example, cockle. You all don't know cockle. So I will show the picture of the cockle. Okay, good. So to eat this guava fruit or the guava leaf, the caterpillar is coming, the parrot is coming, the squirrel is coming. So we know that. From the above observation, we can see connection between animals and plants for food. Animal and plant. What is the animal? Caterpillar. What is the plant? Guava. What is guava? Peraka. Pera. That plant. Okay. Pera plant. Yes, this is like the food chain. I'm going to explain the food chain to you. Okay. Now you can see this is a caterpillar eating the leaf. So why did the caterpillar come to your house to eat the, maybe in this situation, they are saying guava leaf. Not only guava leaf, your mango leaf, your rose flower leaf, caterpillar is eating the leaf. Uh, you all can see the uh, pictures of the caterpillar and all those things, no, in the screen. Can you all see? Yes. 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 Okay. The ones who can't see the screen again, uh, you can leave the Zoom and again join because some people can't see, maybe because of the coverage problem in your area. Go to a place where there is more coverage, then only it won't get stuck. For me, I'm in Colombo. So the coverage is very good. So you can go to a place where there is more and more coverage. So here the caterpillar is eating the leaf. So caterpillar and the leaf has a connection. That is the plant and the animal has a connection. And the next, uh, here again, the caterpillar example is shown. Now this one, the squirrel, it is also coming to eat the fruit. Here it's a strawberry fruit. And the parrot, can you see a parrot? 
that parrot is eating the guava. And also many other things, for example, grasshopper, it's coming to eat the grass. So all these plant, all these animals, why did they get attracted and come to your home garden to eat the food? Then, when you observe some more, okay, when you observe some more, did you understand this? Easy, no? Then the next one, when you observe some animals are eating other small animals, you might think, oh, yo, these animals are eating another animal, but that is the nature. Okay, that is the nature. So if you look at the examples, okay, this is a simple example of a home garden. The squirrel came to eat the fruit, no? Then a cockle is coming to eat the squirrel. Cockle is like a uh, like an eagle, one bird. Okay, I will show the picture, then you will understand. Then there is a lizard. We call it chameleon. In Tamil, we say onan. That is coming to eat the caterpillar. Or else, or else this rat snake, I told you this snake which came to my home yesterday that is slowly coming to eat the squirrels or the parrot or lizard or the rat whatever it gets it will eat and go so here you can see one animal is depending on another animal for the food first example you saw one animal depending on plants for food now now we are seeing that this animal is depending on another animal for food can you see when an insect is coming this crow is eating that insect. So this is the cockle. Okay, this is the cockle. The cockle is eating the caterpillar or the lizard. It's catching and it's going and eating. Even the squirrel, it will eat like a crow, but a little bit stronger than the crow. Then the lizard is coming to eat the caterpillar. The snake is coming to eat the squirrel or the rats, or the lizard, whatever. And maybe the crows are also coming to eat the other animals. So from this, what can you see? From this, we can see that, from this, we can see that animals are coming to eat another animal. Okay? Animals are coming to eat another animal. So we understood two things. Some animals depend on plant, other animals depend on some other animals for their food. Yeah, one minute, someone is asking. I told unit number 10, Puta, unit number 10. Okay, unit number 10. Okay, don't need to open the book and all. Okay, don't need to open the book. Okay, that's it. Now, y'all are always in school. Okay, y'all are just listening, reading, 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 and just uh, writing everything. But today, don't worry about the textbook. I will teach some lessons. You try to understand this because I will explain. Okay, I have got the um, name that in Colombo, I am the science teacher who's explaining everything completely. So in school also they are reading, uh, other classes also they are reading. Now I will explain, you listen carefully. And after that, today night, I will send this presentation in the free WhatsApp group. Okay, then you can, if you want, you can write it down. If you want, you can take a printout if you like. Okay, understood, good. So for now we have understood, okay, for now we have understood that some plant, some animals are coming to our home garden to eat the plants, while some other animals are coming to eat the other animals, okay? Yeah, so concentrate on your studying on the screen <coughs> because online classes, it's not like school. Okay, online classes, it's not like school. You have to be very, very attentive. Okay, you have to be properly listening to the screen, pro properly listening to the teacher, or else you will forget everything and you will listen here and there. You will do other some other options. You will um, raise hand or do other options and you will just waste your time. Okay, so listen to what I am saying carefully because this is one of the most important lessons 
which is happening okay good then when you look at a food web now we saw some connections we'll put all these connections together food web if we put all the above interactions together we obtain a food web okay we obtain a food web so when you look at a food web now <clears throat> whatever examples we saw the guava plant the squirrel the caterpillar the parrot the lizard the snake the cockle all those things we are putting into one group okay we are putting into one group when you put everything to one group it becomes like a spider web this is known as the food web so from this you can understand squirrel is eating from the guava plant caterpillar is eating from the guava plant parrot is eating from the guava plant when you look at a lizard it is eating the caterpillar it is eating the caterpillar when you look at the cockle it may eat the lizard it may eat the squirrel or it may eat the caterpillar or if it can it will even catch the parrot and eat if you look at the rat sorry rat snake if you look at the rat snake it is eating the lizard if it can catch the squirrel it will catch the squirrel and eat if it can catch the parrot it will eat the parrot so all these animals food we put together it is known as the okay it is known as the food web okay what is a cockle i have shown the picture this is the cockle can you see the one which is eating okay <clears throat> that is the cockle so from this we can understand animals and animals animals and plants they have a relationship for food so if i give a diagram with the pictures if i give a diagram with the pictures it will be like this now look at this diagram grass grass is eaten by caterpillar we know that caterpillar is eaten by the magpie bird grass is eaten by caterpillar caterpillar is eaten by magpie in other words grass is eaten by cow then cow is eaten by maybe lion tiger or any other animals then we'll look at grasshopper grass is eaten by grasshopper grasshopper is eaten by the lizard and the lizard is eaten by the cat so can you see how the food chain this is known as food chain or food web grass grasshopper lizard and then finally the cat and if there is a lion or tiger that lion or tiger will eat the cat so that is how there is a relationship between the animals for its food did you understand completely good then there is another diagram okay this is a very very simple diagram a diagram that shows the interrelationship among animals and plants for food is known as the food web so please write down this definition okay write down a question what is a food web and the answer is a diagram that shows the interrelationship among animals and plants for food is known as a food web please write down a question what is a food web what is a food web and then write down yeah take a piece of paper and write it down okay i will give some activities like that you do that okay please write down i will give one minute to copy this definition the diagram that shows the interrelationship among animals and plants for food is known as food web
Okay, then I hope all of you all have written down. So in the school, if they ask you, okay, if they ask you, what is food web? This is going to be your answer. Can you understand? Good. Then, modes of nutrition of animals. This is our next topic. Before going to the next topic, I would like to tell you, okay, I will show something and I will ask. Now, we know about science, no? When we were talking about science, many students were saying, science is the study about our life. Okay, so when it comes to life, is this correct? Is it the life of No. Okay, most of the grade 8s, grade 9s, grade 7s, all are saying yes. Why is that? Because early in the morning, they are waking up. Online classes, they are going to the computer. After that, they are tired. They are eating, they are sleeping. Then computer or phone. So most of the students' lives is going like this. Then I will ask you a question. Are you happy with this online life? Are you happy with this online life? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You all are waiting for the schools to start. But we don't know when the schools will start because of the corona pandemic situation. Okay, we don't know when the school will start. Therefore, what can you do? Are you, sir, we can't study online. You, can you complain like that and wait? When you're complaining, you won't study, but all your friends will nicely study and get the good marks. Okay, so don't miss this chance. These online days, if you are getting online classes, go to online classes. Okay, you do it properly. But the students are feeling lazy. They say they can't sit for online classes. I will give some methods to be active in the online class. Okay, then please raise the hand and show how many parents are listening to these lectures. How many parents are also listening? Hmm, around, uh, yeah, around 100 parents are listening to these lectures and waiting. Okay, good. Then others also call your parents and tell them to listen to this because this is very important, okay, for for y'all and for your parents also. Tell your parents also to come and sit for the classes because I'm going to tell one important psychology thing. Okay, yes. How to make your online life interesting? Okay, how to make your online life interesting? Parents, if you are listening to this, please help the students to do these things. First thing is you have to plan. Okay, you have to put a small plan. Today, what I am going to study. What are the online classes you have? Whether you are going to study science or maths or what are the lessons you have to write and keep. Okay, normally, Benjamin Franklin, one of the greatest person of America, he said, by failing to plan, you are planning to fail. That means, does anyone like to fail? No, no. Do you like to fail? No. But if you don't put a proper plan and start, automatically you will fail. Okay, so therefore, if you want to be successful. If you want to be get good marks, first you have to put a plan. Because when you go to school, the school will already have a plan. They have a timetable. They have all the plans. But when you're at home, no plan. Anytime you can get up, anytime you can sleep. So always put a plan and write down all the plans in a piece of paper and paste it in your wall. Every day you have to do this. And at night you have to check, ah, did I study? Did I complete my work? Did I sit for the online classes? Like that, you have to complete. Okay, the parents, you all also help the students to do these things. Every night, check their progress. If they do well, give them a reward. If they don't do, give them a small punishment. Punishment like uh, you have to sweep the house. If you don't study today, you have to sleep the, uh, sweep the house. But if you study, you can play half an hour games. Like that, please allow the students, give them some reward and give them some small punishment. Don't hit them and all. 
but give some small punishment like you have to sweep the house today you only have to wash the dishes today or you have to put water to the garden like that give them some small work okay if you study you get a reward if you don't study you get a punishment like that every day have a system at home or else it will be very hard always you will be sleeping sleeping online and you will be just going here and there you won't study you are missing two years of your life now you won't understand the importance when going to o level only you it will be a big problem so that is the first thing so will you do that hereafter will you put a plan and study properly according to the plan yes okay. sir yes 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 sir okay okay i think some connection problem no hurry then the next one is you have to have a organized desk okay parents please make a small organized desk for the students okay maybe there are five six brothers and uh, two or three brothers and sisters at home but for each one make a small space and give for them to keep their books their pens their pencils all those things because according to psychology they say if you have a proper organized place to study you can get good marks the most intelligent people and the people who are working hard the main scientist they have a organized place to work okay so parents you all only have to do that help you take a small table even if you can't buy it nowadays no problem you make a small like a area for them to study okay then they will sit and study every day put a time table morning 6 to uh, morning 7 to 8 they have to study then they will go to their place and they will sit and study okay and the most 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 important thing okay the most important thing you have to do now is you have to wake up early nowadays no school no so all are getting up late parents also no work therefore they are getting up late no don't do that okay try to wake up early you have to pray you have to recite and then you have to study when you wake up you have to brush the teeth you have to wash the face you have to become active okay so always when you wake up you brush the teeth you wash your face then only you will become active and then you should have a healthy breakfast parents okay okay parents you are responsible to give a healthy breakfast for your children because why i am telling all this because if the child's morning is okay morning is good he will study well or else if he is lazy in the morning his full day will become lazy and he or she won't study properly okay these are psychologically proven things because i am a doctor that's why i am telling all these things for the students okay i don't only want to give the lesson i want the students to do well in life and in the lessons also so morning now nowadays i know we know because of the lockdown and all parents are waking up late and uh, they are buying the buns from the shop and giving to the children and the children now during this uh, corona period they are eating bun 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 and the ch children have become like buns okay because no school no no physical activity they are not running they are not jumping they are not playing just inside the home so they have become like buns eating bun and bread then rice okay so breakfast especially breakfast you have to give something healthy for them and minimum 15 to half an hour the child should do a small exercise okay okay so the child should do a exercise then only he will become active after that after that let him go to the online classes okay so parents please listen to this directly don't give them the phone when they wake up don't give the phone don't give the laptop and tell to go to online classes so wake them little bit early and do all these five things or four things and then put them to the online class then only online class they will be active and they can concentrate okay because if the school is there okay if the school is there
okay if the school is there automatically they will wake up they will run they will do some activity but now no school no all online so therefore they automatically they won't do so parents if you want your children to do well in online now all the parents are complaining ayyo our students are not studying online they are just uh, running here and there they are sleeping in online classes if you do all these things and properly maintain them they will study and the fourth one get help from the family members every day mother and father you have to check their progress okay you have to ask them what did you do today online classes how many fathers are listening to this just raise the hand how many fathers are listening to this uh, lesson oh okay very good okay so many fathers are there i'm really happy okay so mother father both should help the students because these days the students are not going towards the teachers not going to school or else the teachers are there to look after but now online only the teacher can teach they can't do counseling or they can't um, understand the student and speak to them freely because online all those barriers are there so the parents you should be your child's friend you should play with the uh, children okay every day fathers minimum half an hour arrange to play with your children if if you all don't play with them later they will get angry with you and they won't listen to your your uh, advices so if you want your child to listen to your advice first you become your child's best friend especially for the fathers and mothers i am telling you become your child's best friend then the children will openly tell you everything if they are having any problem now just raise the hand how many students when you are doing online classes you all are getting headache just raise the raise the hand and show how many of you all are getting headache when doing online classes now see more than 60 70 students are raising the hand maybe until now the pair more than 100 that is also grade 6 students they are getting headache so you have to check why are they getting the headache is their eyes spoiled or is their um, are they getting migraine okay so all these things sometimes they won't tell the parents okay if i ask a question like this only they are raising the hand okay so parents students are facing a lot of psychological problem these days so you all have to help okay so you all have to deal so if you do all these four things properly planning proper organized table and the other one is early morning you wake up eat wash your face uh, brush your teeth exercise and then go for start classes and with the family support if you do these four things properly you can learn a lot of things online easily okay there are some things to do in online classes and not to do i will send this photo i don't want to explain these things okay one thing i'll tell you don't allow the students to do online classes while sleeping in the bed it's not good for their health and they won't concentrate properly okay don't be in the bed or don't be in the sofa when going for online classes and studying sit arrange a desk sit on the chair keep the phone on the phone holder if it's a laptop okay if it's a phone don't keep the phone in the hand keep a small distance keep it in a uh, phone holder okay like that you have many things i will send this photo okay so i hope you understood why these days these problems okay the students now did you all understand why you all are having this online boring life online classes you hate online classes all because our our routine is not correct okay so are you ready to change yourself to study well and to become more motivated okay really happy to hear all of your voices so from tomorrow do all the things properly you can see a big change my grade 9 students 10 students 11 students they are doing all this and they have got a very good um, result and now they are studying well the parents also active they have got good marks for second term okay so i want you all also to do well okay now we'll go to our continuation <coughs> harida so until now we were talking about the home garden there are some animals which are eating the plants there are some animals which are eating other animals so when you come to mode of nutrition of animals animals have three different patterns of modes of nutrition what are they first one is herbivore 
herbivore means the animals which are dependent only on plants for example cow does the cow eat any other animals does the cow go and eat the rat no the cow will only eat grass vegetables and fruit so cow is a herbivore so herbivores who are the herbivores animals that consume only plant material so they will surely ask this question you have to i write the answer the animals that consume only plant materials next one carnivores who are the carnivores carnivores are animals that consume flesh or the meat of other animals example lion example tiger lion will it eat fruits if you give fruits to lion will it eat no will you if you give vegetable to the fruit uh, to the lion it will eat no it will only eat the flesh or the meat of other animals it will hunt a rabbit and it will eat it will hunt another animal and it will eat understood then there is another type of animals in between both what are they omnivores 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 that eat flesh and plant very good they can eat flesh and also they can eat plant okay those are the omnivores animals that consume both flesh and plant materials are known as omnivores so humans we are coming under what category एग्जाम्पल कौ grass hopper caterpillar are some of them not only grass plants grass is the staple food of cow cows are mainly eating main food staple food means main food of cow is grass leaves and tender leaves okay leaves and tender leaves of grass are eaten by caterpillars and grasshoppers tender leaves means young young leaves okay young leaves the animals that consume only plant materials are known as herbivores so they have given some examples for herbivores cow rabbit deer giraffe grasshopper caterpillar elephants all those are herbivores herbivores then these are the pictures so zebra is there deer cow giraffe elephants the things which you know yeah don't worry i will send this presentation today night in the group i will put the presentation so you can listen to that present uh, sorry see that presentation and write all the needed things now don't write whatever i am saying to write you write all nicely listen listen carefully identify the food consumed by magpie lizard and rat snakes okay when you look at now in that picture can you see i don't know ah uh, yeah one minute i will show the picture in this picture can you see the lizard and the magpie they are eating the other animals the grasshopper they are eating the grasshopper okay they feed on herbivores so some animals are there they are eating the herbivore the eating the other animals animals that consume flesh of other animals are known as carnivores wolf leopard lion tiger all the snakes are some examples for carnivorous animals okay those are carnivores we are if we are putting adding the name animals we are saying carnivorous animals herbivorous animals 
Okay, good. So all these are carnivores. Okay. The tiger, the leopard, the wolf, the cheetah, the lion, okay, the fox, the hyena, all those. Sometimes bear. Bear falls under two categories because the bear sometimes it's eating fruits and sometimes it's eating the flesh. They consume plant materials and flesh. These animals that consume both flesh and plant materials are known as omnivores. Okay, those are the omnivores. So we have studied all those in the in the book. They have given this example: chicken. Sometimes chicken is eating worms. That means it's eating another animal. Chicken is eating rice. That is plant. So omnivores. If you look at cockroach, cockroach can eat the dead animals, and also it can eat the rice or whatever plants. Crow. Have you all seen the crow? Normally in Sri Lanka, you can see you no know, in the road. What will happen? The crow will eat the lions and the tiger. Uh, sorry, the crow will eat the rats. The dead rats are eaten by the crow. No, you might have seen pieces, pieces. It will eat. Then when you look at the pig, pig is eating all the dirt and the small, small, small insects in the dirt, and also it's eating fruits and vegetables. All those things it's eating, and also bear. Sometimes it's eating the flesh. Sometimes it's eating the plant. Sources, so those kind of things are omnivores. Especially human, we are omnivores, no? We are omnivores because we can eat flesh, and we can eat fruits, we can eat vegetables, and all those things. Can you understand? So these examples are omnivores example. So finally, again, I am telling you three categories are there: herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Herbivores are eating only plant materials. Carnivores are eating only flesh of other animals. Omnivores are eating both plant material and flesh material. And these are all the examples together: carnivores example, herbivores example, and omnivore example. Okay. So then, earlier we learned the food chain, the food web. Okay, now this food web, food chain, carnivores, herbivores, everything. Finally, we can put it into one group. First, we learn the food web. This is one food web. Plant is there. Plant is eaten by the rabbit. Rabbit is what category? Herbivore, or carnivore, or omnivore? It's falling under the herbivore. Then next example, goat. Goat is falling under herbivore. Goat is falling under herbivore. Then rat, rat can sometimes fall under carnivore or uh, sorry omnivore because it can eat plants and sometimes it can even eat the flesh of other animals. We'll say omnivore. Then we'll go to the next category. Rabbit is eaten by a leopard or the goat is eaten by the leopard. Then the leopard is it carnivore? Is it omnivore? No, it is coming on. Sorry, it is herbivore or omnivore? No, no, no. It is coming under carnivore. So you can see in the food chain or the food web, starting is always plant. Then next one is most of the time it is herbivore, and then ending is carnivore. Goat. Now see the goat herbivore, eaten by the fox. So the fox is a carnivore. So like this, herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, food chain, food web, all have pattern. now we'll go to now this is a food okay this is a food web all these things together it is a food web i gave the definition also i think you all wrote the definition please memorize that definition okay very important please memorize that definition now this same chart we are separately writing plant rabbit leopard plant goat fox plant rat owl like that if we write separately this is known as food chain can you understand the difference between food web and a food chain food web is like a spider web here they are here they are everywhere the arrows will go but food chain we are writing only one line plant is eaten by rabbit rabbit is eaten by leopard plant is eaten by goat goat is eaten by leopard 
The other one, plant is eaten by rat. Rat is eaten by owl. Like that, if you write one by one, what is the name given? Food web or food chain? Food chain. Food chain. Food chain. Food chain. Food chain. Food chain. Okay, it is known as the food chain. Then. Food chain, food chain, food chain, sir. Okay, okay. Food chain, sir. Okay, then there is another good definition. Chain, sir. Okay, there is another definition. Please write it down. A linear sequence. Linear means straight. Sequence means one after the other. A linear sequence that starts from a green plant and shows the flow of energy from one living organism to another is known as a food chain. Please write this definition down. You have to memorize this also. Okay, in another 10 minutes, the class will over. Don't, don't worry. First, you wrote the definition of food web. Now you are writing the definition of food chain. Okay, so you should be able to memorize those two things. So next class, I will ask this. Okay, so I hope you can understand the difference between food chain and food web. Give me one minute, if possible, I will explain that again. Okay, there is a small problem in my camera. One minute. Okay, then next week I will show small problem with the camera or else I will nicely draw and show a food web and from that food web how to make a food chain. Okay, next week I will show it in the class. So don't worry. Okay, then ah, here another food chain with the pictures. Grass, rabbit, leopard. That is the food chain. So in this food chain, who is the first person? The grass. We call it the producer first person it's the first unit it's the producer then the grass is eaten by the rabbit that is the second person we call it consumer then that person is eaten by the leopard that is also consumer so all these are consumers so if we are categorizing the consumers we can categorize as herbivores carnivores and omnivores in this situation rabbit is a consumer, but what type of consumer? <clears throat> Herbivores. Leopard, it's also a consumer, but it is a carnivore. Plants are falling under what category? Producer. Always plants are the producers. So from where is the plant getting energy to produce? Anyone knows from where the plant is getting energy? From the sun. From the sun. From the sun, from the sunlight, it's getting energy and that energy will be converted into food. I will show a photo here. The sunlight is there. That light will fall on the plants and that will convert to the food and that food will be eaten by grasshopper. Grasshopper will be eaten by mouse. Mouse will be eaten by the owl. That is how energy is traveling from one organism to the other organism. Are you all completely clear about this? Today, our topic is interaction of animal related to food. Now, nicely, you can see every other animal depends on something else. Owl depends on mouse. Mouse depends on grasshopper. Grasshopper depends on grass. And finally, grass depends on the sun. Then tell me, what is the special name given to the process? 
by which the plants are producing food by using sunlight energy special name is photosynthesis 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 and okay so the plants are the plants are getting energy from the sunlight they are doing photosynthesis 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 and storing all the food and then that food is eaten by the rabbit and that is storing that food and that is eaten by the leopard and that is how the energy is transmitted that is how the food is transmitted this is showing the clear relationship between animal and animal animal and plant for what for food then there is another one for security for um, habitat all that we will study in our future grades in grade 7 grade 8 you have lot to study these are the basics okay these are the basic things so i hope you can understand these basic things so today night i will send the uh, pdf of this uh, so did you understand today's lesson yes yes sir yes sir okay i am really really happy that you understood today's lesson because i wanted to give the lesson in mainly pictures because according to psychology if you listen better than listening if you see you will study so that's why in everything in every slides i have put pictures so today i will send that uh, pdf at night okay so you can write and draw the some pictures if you can you can draw that pictures okay make science interesting because science is the most interesting most interesting subject in the whole world because we are going to in in future for the grade 7 and 8 i showed the video of the brain i have taken a brain and i cut the brain and i showed them do you all like to see that videos or you are scared of that i want to see i like to see the video like that ah okay okay at last at last i will show that video okay because in grade 7 we you have a chapter related to the brain and the spinal cord most of our student they have not seen the brain properly only pictures they have seen because they are not going to school no in the school sometimes in some schools they have a real brain so what i did was i got a real brain and i cut it and i showed them and they were really really happy about that okay i will show you all also because if you want to become doctors how many of you all want to become doctors raise the hand very good more than 100 doctors from our grade 6 class very good i am really happy okay because uh, i am in the doctor field okay i will help the students i will give more motivation everything for them to uh, how to become doctor all those things i will say others also very good if you want to become engineers pilot uh, all those things that is very good okay but science especially biology will help you to become a doctor and to understand a lot of things in this world okay so today we have completed uh, this lesson okay we have another small part i will explain that next week so our future plan in uh, september we will finish unit 6 in october we will finish unit 8, 7 and 8 and in november unit 9 and the final lesson unit 11 today unit 10 finished okay and december do you like to go to grade 7 quickly so in december itself we will start our grade 7 lessons we have a third term exam okay you have a main exam i want all of you all to come and do that exam online exam after doing that exam the ones who are getting more than 50 marks they will be promoted to grade 7 and they can continue in grade 7 you have a lot of interesting lessons okay you have a lot of interesting and very good uh, nice lessons which you can learn 
okay the so the ones who want to become scientists the ones who want to become doctors all those the science lessons will be very very interesting to you okay so many people are asking how to join our classes so don't worry we have online classes and from all over sri lanka students are coming even in youtube i have a video youtube uh, channel in that grade 9 10 11 videos are there okay if you want you also can okay you can uh, check it okay uh, wait now i will play the video because the azan is going on i will play only the video Okay, students. So I hope you all saw the human brain. Okay, that's a real brain. I have cut it and I have shown it. So, so much interesting things you will learn in science. You will learn about the brain. You will learn about the lungs. You will learn about the heart. I have all the videos of cutting the heart, of cutting the lungs, blowing the lungs. Nice videos in future. We can see all those things. Okay, so our next week, we will start a theory, new topic. Uh, so what is this? What do you think is the topic next week topic? Very good. It's related to electricity. Okay, so the next unit will be to so next week. We will be starting the lesson related to electricity. That is also a very nice lesson, but you have to learn a lot of new things. So you have to repeat again and again the words. Uh, what is current, what is ammeter, what is ohm meter, multimeter, all those you have to repeat again and again, then you can easily study. It's a very interesting lesson. So the ones who want to join that lesson, uh, okay, you can come to our theory classes. Free classes, we don't have every week. We have only once in, one, uh, once in a month or once in two months because I do free classes for grade six, grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, grade 11. Then after two months only, every class, every grade will get one chance. Okay, so you all can come to the free classes, no problem. But if you are coming to our theory classes, we will have it every week, every Saturday, same time, 11 a.m. to 12 or sometimes until 12, 15, it will go. So 11 to 12, we have our grade six theory classes every, every Saturday. So if you want to join, you can tell your mothers or fathers 
to send a message to my number the fees is only 500 rupees okay so don't need to worry it's sorry sorry 700 rupees it's not a big amount only 700 rupees and we are giving a special offer admission fees is free for the newcomers okay admission fees is free the institute now they inform me that the admission fees is free so you don't need to pay the admission you can only pay the monthly fees and come to our classes or else you have to pay admission 500 for now after this seminar around for 50 students we will give free admission so you all can come so if you want to join our paid classes you can send a whatsapp message and i will send the admission form you can fill the admission form and join our classes okay then students i hope you understood today's lesson and uh, inshallah i will try as much as possible to do some free classes also but every day i can't do because i have a lot of other works other classes grade 9 grade 10 grade 11 all them and then I, I am a doctor, I have to, I am making medicines also. So with all that work, I have given a small chance because many students, my old students, they requested to do for grade six also a seminar because it will be good for them. So that's why I kept today's class as an open class, free class for everyone to come and join. So next week class, it will be a paid class. Okay, it's just 700 rupees monthly. You can come for all four classes. Okay, so the ones who want to join and the ones who like my method, the ones who love to study online, and once you like my method, you can tell your parents to contact me and get the admission. Okay, then students, I hope you understood today's session and uh, you're uh, okay with today's learning. So don't worry, you can study from wherever you're in Sri Lanka. Now students have come from uh, Colombo, students have come from Kandy, from Gaul, from Matara, from Jaffna, from Kurnagala, from everywhere. So because of this online method, anywhere from Sri Lanka, by staying at home, you can learn from the best teachers in Colombo. Okay, then uh, don't take online classes as a burden. Don't think it is bad. You can't study. No, you can study very well. You can get very, very good marks. You can get the best explanation. So you can join the classes. Okay, then students, thank you for joining the session. I hope you understood today's session and